Hello, uh, welcome. I, uh, I'm going to share the historical context from the end of the book of Ether, chapters 12 through 15. But before I do that, I want you to go to the book of Omni, earlier in the Book of Mormon. Here in Omni, we have the records of the Nephites leaving the land of Nephi and going up and finding the people of Zarahemla. And they unite with the people of Zarahemla. And the Nephite king, which is Mosiah, becomes the king over both nations. Now, again, go to Omni, chapter 1. Go to verse 19. And it says, And it came to pass that the people of Zarahemla and of Mosiah did unite together. And Mosiah was appointed to be their king. So here we have the Zarahemlaites and the Nephites joining together. And we know that the people of the Zarahemla are the Mulekites. Okay? Verse 20, And it came to pass in the days of Mosiah there was a large stone brought unto him with engravings on it. And he did interpret the engravings by the gift and power of God. Verse 21, And they gave an account of one Coriantumr and the slain of his people. And Coriantumr was discovered by the people of Zarahemla. And he, it's Coriantumr, dwelt with them for the space of nine moons. Okay, so here in the book of Omni, we know that King Mosiah did unite with the, Zerim, the people of Zarahemla, the Mulekites. So all of the Nephites and all of the Mulekites are now one great people. And he hears that the Mulekites, when they first landed in America and started to build up their civilization and their society, that there was a guy named Coriantumr who lived with them for nine moons. It's this Coriantumr that we're going to study about in the book of Ether. So now, if you'll open up the book of Ether, uh, we'll go to chapter 12. Now, just a recap. Last week, we looked at lists of people and genealogies. In fact, all the way down until we found Ether was the son of Coriantor. Now, who's this Ether? Well, Let's get to Ether right now. So if you'll go to Ether chapter 12, we can study a little bit about who this Ether is. Ether chapter 12. And it came to pass that the days of Ether were in the days of Coriantumr. That's the Coriantumr that we read about in Omni. So they're contemporaries. And Coriantumr was king over all the land. Verse 2, and Ether was a prophet of the Lord. So here on our chart here, you can see that Coriantor's son was Ether. Ether's the prophet, sent in the days of the king, and the king is Coriantumr. And so what's going to happen? Well, Ether's going to declare what every prophet in every dispensation does and should do, is if you go to verse 3, it's repent or be baptized or in this case, repent or be destroyed. In this case, we know that the end result is the people don't repent, but the Lord still sends prophets to declare repent or be destroyed. Now, for the rest of chapter 12, uh, we see it's about hope and charity and so forth and faith. So just a couple quick notes, and then you can study that one on your own. Verse 4, wherefore... Whoso believeth in God might with surety hope for a better world. I think we probably live in a world that we can all say, can we please hope for a better world than what we have? Well, how do you do that? Notice what it says. You have to believe in God. I, I really think that's the root of our problem. If we could all unitedly believe in God, we would have surety of hope for a better hope. Notice what it says. which Hope cometh of faith. So if we could increase our faith in God, then there's hope for a better world. Without it, we just don't have that hope. I, I, I just thought that's an important preface. Now you can study chapter 12. It's the message of Ether. These are the great words of Ether and what he says to do. Now go to chapter 13. 
in chapter 13, right at the beginning, Mormon is going to tease us yet once again. And I, Moroni, proceed to finish my record. Again, Moroni keeps thinking he's done writing. And he says, I'm just going to finish this up and I'm done. Which we know because there's another book called Moroni that we'll get to next week that Moroni's not finished writing. And he has more time and has more things that he needs to say. But in this case, what does he talk about? Uh, verse 2 for behold, they rejected all the words of Ether. For he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man, and that after the waters had receded, we're talking the flood of Noah, from off this land, we're talking America, it, America, became a choice land above all other lands. So when did America become a choice land? After the flood. Again, Adam and Eve, we believed, lived here in America, right? Uh, Independence, Missouri, Jackson County, Missouri is where the Garden of Eden was. And Adam and Eve's descendants, as they spread out, were spreading out upon this land, where then they gathered with Noah on the ark. You know, Enoch's people went to heaven, Noah's people on the ark, everyone else died. Traditionally, we believe that ark of Noah landed in what we call the old world, but for Noah, it was the new world. Uh, most believe it was in present-day Turkey is where the ark landed. And that Adam and his sons and their families descended upon that old world, which for them is the new world. Thus, America is an isolated land, a, choice, a chosen land. And it says that all men should serve him who dwell upon the face thereof. So America has been a special land for, from the beginning. Now, in, in verse 3, it talks about the new Jerusalem, and it should come down out of heaven. But it also says it shall be built up upon this land. So here in chapter 13 is a great place to study the doctrine of the new Jerusalem. A couple of things. Go back to what Jesus said when he came and visited America. This is 3 Nephi chapters 20 and chapter 20, chapters 20 and 21. And then here again in Ether 13. The three best chapters about this. Study the 13 articles of faith, specifically article of faith 10, right? That here in America, there will be this new Jerusalem. There's lots of footnotes and cross-referencing. Uh, a great topic. That's a great doctrine to study. But there's the background. Ether was the prophet who prophesied great things upon this land if Coriantumr and his people would just repent. They don't, so they all get destroyed. Coriantumr is the only one who lives. And he will find the Mulekites. And then he dies. The Mulekites find the Nephites. Well, the other way around, right? And then they have this great civilization until they're all dead. Why? Because they don't keep the Lord first in their life. They're not a holy people. So we're brought over. When I say we're, the Europeans are brought over by the hand of the Lord. And as long as we're righteous and serve and worship the Lord, this will be a special place. We're not. There's going to be challenges and problems. So let's take a look at one more thing about those who live in the New Jerusalem. Go to verse 10. This is Ether chapter 13, verse 10. And then cometh the New Jerusalem, and blessed are they who dwell therein. For it is they whose garments are white through the blood of the Lamb. How do you get that? That's through covenants and ordinances. Those who live in the New Jerusalem are those who make and keep sacred covenants that bring the fullness of the atonement of Jesus Christ into our lives. So think about that. Have, are you making and keeping sacred covenants? Are you eligible to live in this great place called the New Jerusalem? Well, let's go to the very... Well, I, one more thing. Verse 13. Chapter 13, verse 13. <clears throat> right in the middle there. Great and marvelous were the prophecies of Ether, but they esteemed him as not and cast him out, and he hid himself in the cavity of a rock. There's some interesting things about people who have been hiding in a rock, Mormon, Moroni, and Ether, and what that possibly could represent. Uh, we know the rock of our Redeemer. Do we hide within the, the cavity of our Savior, the, the rock of our Redeemer, the rock of revelation, and so forth? You could have some fun uh, learning about, okay, am I sheltering within the rock of my Redeemer. Have a little fun with that. Let's go to chapter 
uh, 13. Let's scroll all the way down to verse 16 and 17 now. Now we're going to learn a little bit about Ether's prophesied. We have his great prophecies and so forth. But now we're going to talk, just do the, the context here. Uh, and reading this gives most of it. But Coriantumr has studied himself in all the arts of war. He's a king. He's a, he's a general in the army. He's going to lead his people to battle. And verse 17, it says, They repented not, nor the sons or daughters of Kohor or Korahor. So all the people before have not repented, and they're going to go to battle. So let's read about these battles here and get the historical context. So would you please go to oh, verse 20, chapter 13, verse 20. Ether gives Cor, uh, Coriantumr a second chance. He says, okay, I'm coming again to tell you, please uh, repent or you're all going to be destroyed and all of your people. And he ignores it. So who's going to come to battle? In verse 23, there is a, a man by the name of Sherid. And this guy is going to give battle uh, multiple times to Coriantumr, but he's going to get killed and his brother Gilead is going to lead uh, into battle. So that is chapter 14. So go to chapter 14 for a moment here. Uh, Gilead's going to be lead into battle. The problem is Gilead is going to be killed by his own high priest. How's that for a righteous high priest? The high priest is going to kill you and so forth. Well, so Gilead's going to be killed. Uh, Sh Sh Sherid has been killed. So who's going to take over? Well, we're going to go to a man by the name of Lib. Uh, Lib gives Coriantumr, Coriantumr battle. This is chapter 14, verse oh, 10. And then in verse 16, Lib gets killed. And who? what's going to happen with Lib? Well, his brother, Shiz, is going to take over. So again, we have brother uh, defending the honor of his brother and just prolonging the battle and the war. So it really comes down to there's three people left. There's Ether, who's the prophet, who's been hiding in the cavity of a rock, but he's observing what's going to happen and what is happening. Coriantumr and his people, and we get down to Shiz and his people. Eventually, we see how horrible this group is. In fact, let me show you how bad these people are. Again, go to chapter 14. Go to verse 17. This is just enough to give some summary of this context here. Verse 17, now the name of the brother of Lib was called Shiz, and it came to pass that Shiz pursued after Coriantumr and did overthrow many cities. And he did slay both women and children, and he did burn the cities. Uh, this is an annihilation of a civilization, this battle that Shiz continues on and Coriantumr is taking. It gets so bad, in verse 21, we learn that the entire land is just covered with bloodshed and carnage and bodies everywhere. There's nobody left to bury the body, so the land stinks. That's uh, verse 23, the scent thereof went forth upon all the face of the land. I mean, just horrible. And verse 24, Shiz did not cease to pursue Coriantumr. I mean, the battle goes on. Once in a while, you'll read here in these chapters, they take a pause, but it's not peace. They just stop fighting because they're wounded. Go to verse 27. So terrible was the destruction among the armies of Shiz that the people began to be frightened and began to flee before the army, armies of Coriantumr. And they fled to the land of Korahor and swept off the inhabitants before them, all then that would not join them. Again, this is not a pleasant time that we're seeing here. It's just a terrible time. So how many people have been killed? Go to chapter 15, our final chapter in the book of Ether. Verse 2 tells us, Nearly two millions of his people, and he began to sorrow in his heart. There had been slain two millions of mighty men, and also their wives and their children. This is, again, a horrible time to live, and they do not repent. They still don't. And then you can go to the end of chapter 15 and see the final battle between Coriantumr and Shiz, and Shiz gets killed, and Coriantumr survives and we know that Coriantumr wanders until he finds the the uh the uh people uh in Zarahemla and he lives with them for the last nine months of his life apparently. 
but I want to share the very last verse from Ether chapter 15. This is Moroni writing down the last words that Ether wrote. The last words which were written by Ether are these, quote, Whether the Lord will that I should be that I be translated or that I suffer the will of the Lord in the flesh, it mattereth not. If it so be that I am saved in the kingdom of God. Amen. And that concludes the book of Ether, this great prophet who prophesied from the beginning of the world until the latter days of the New Jerusalem. I look forward to reading and hearing more about Ether in years to come, hopefully. Next week, we will finish or we will begin the book of Moroni, which is the final book in the Book of Mormon. We'll discuss the first six chapters. Meanwhile, have a great week and enjoy your studying.